Good afternoon. Lovely to meet you all. My name's Chris Hicks. I'm the Chief Revenue Officer of Till Payments. I'm looking forward to spending the next 25 to 30 minutes walking you through the journey of small to medium business and the drive towards e-commerce. I think most importantly from this session, it's an understanding of how e-commerce and, and importantly unified payments affect your business and how being on the forefront of financial services technology can not only increase your revenue, but increase your customer levels of engagement. Whilst we go through today's session, there's four main key points I would like to walk through. Firstly, is it a little bit of a review around payments, especially in the small business sector, you know, before we went into the pandemic. So really understanding what has been in place for many years prior. The second part I'd like to touch on is the drive towards e-commerce and more broadly, the transition away from a classic bricks and mortar retail experience into e-commerce, mobile commerce, and other ways of interacting with your customers when they're not necessarily in your store or on your premise. I think that then nicely tails into what a modern payment solution looks like and how important taking advantage of new technology, you know, be it financial technology, or platform technology can be in terms of enabling your business for growth and for success. And then lastly, and of course, most importantly of all, is getting an understanding of how to future-proof your business and how taking a positive proactive position on how to interact, sell and take payment from your customer can really change the direction of your business, whether it is through the current situation with COVID or in the future as we return to a more normal economy. I think there's a really key point, and I think in some way we have all seen this in, in our own businesses, and that is that the way that businesses take payments has changed, and it's changed forever. And conversely, the way that us as consumers interact with businesses, be it our own, or be it where we go to from a day-to-day -day perspective, have changed. Our expectations have changed, and they have become far more in-depth, and they've become far more detailed in terms of our expectation for a broad range of engagements. Historically, be it pre-COVID or five, 10 years ago, small to medium businesses service their clients in a very classical manner. There was a retail store, a retail outlet, an online presence just wasn't a thing. Your customers came to the store, they came to the service provider location, and they engaged with you in a face-to-face, one-to-one manner. And this is really illustrated by really the lack of e-commerce presence within the small to medium business space. Pre-pandemic, 59% of Australian small businesses did not have a website. Sure, maybe they had Facebook, maybe they had some form of online experience. But the fact that as a consumer, they could not go and interact with your business online and really get right the way through that interaction journey from discovery to exploration to engagement to sale to fulfillment you know, through an online experience really does highlight and reinforce the fact that the Australian small business space has been focused around bricks and mortar. How do I get the customer into the store? We measured success by footfall. We measured success by the number of customers that came into our shopping center, came into our shop. How many financial transactions do we complete? We did not look at how broad a remit do we have? How much can we go and interact with customers after the sales event? How can we get customers to come back into our store or to buy from us again without necessarily having to make that you know, commitment in terms of travel time? I think there's also a really important fallout from the back of that. Many businesses have made allowances for the card to, or the customer, you know, card not present transaction, not to occur face to face. Those allowances have opened up fraud They've opened up opportunities for risk and financial loss, and they've opened up some pretty severe compliance issues. I'm sure all of you at some point in time have taken a credit card over the phone, have written it down on a piece of paper, have created a credit card authority form and sent that form to a customer via phone, via email, via fax. These all served the main purpose. They allowed you as a business owner to be able to take a payment, put the money into your bank account, and ship the goods and services out or provide the services to your customer. So they did their job. The problem is they left the door ajar. Many of you would have had or have heard of chargebacks. This is where a customer or a cardholder can contact their bank and really just challenge the transaction. And unfortunately, as businesses, more often than not, it is the business, it is you that will lose that transaction, which means the money comes out of your account 
and goes back to the cardholder, doing financial damage to your business, creating a huge amount of emotional and professional stress, and really creating a level of trepidation on how to interact with a customer that is not in the store, really reinforcing this attitude that bricks and mortar, the customer comes into the store, pays me face to face and leaves with the goods is the right way to do things. The pandemic, and certainly the last couple of years, have changed this and they have forced our hand. We need to move forward and we need to keep up with how our customers want to interact with us on a day-to-day -day basis. We can see this across a number of different measures. E-commerce, online commerce, online websites, mobile commerce, apps. There's a multitude of ways that we look at and we call the way that we interact with a customer when that customer is not in our store. Now, there are businesses that are purely online. Look at eBay, look at the marketplaces. There is no bricks and mortar retail, yet they are hugely successful. And conversely, we've seen the opposite applying. We've seen businesses that have, for, you know, for eternity, been a bricks and mortar retail, large supermarkets, large liquor chains that have always been about getting the customer into the store, making very strong transitions into servicing online and in-app transactions. There's a really important reason for this, and it's not just COVID, it's not the pandemic. The pandemic has driven change, but consumers have driven change. Our work lifestyle balances have moved. Consumers are looking to a digital interaction. They have a higher expectation and they have a higher desire to interact with businesses offline. They want to be able to go at three o'clock in the morning when they finish their shift and order their groceries. They want to sit down on a Sunday afternoon with a glass of wine and look at furniture without having to go into that retail store. So as consumers, both as business owners and consumers, we are changing the way that we shop. And as a result, we're changing the expectations. 79% year on year growth in online transactions driven by consumers are using digital wallets. They're using their phone. They're using cards stored online to complete transactions. This is a pivotal change in the way that a consumer interacts with the business. Obviously, COVID has had a huge impact, not just in Australia, but globally, in how we as consumers interact with business, be it micro to small to medium to enterprise business. We have all seen a very large change. Gone are the days, whether regulated or not, that we could, at our choice, get into a car, go for a ride, go for a walk, go to the nearest shop and buy what we wanted to buy. We have had our hands forced to find alternate ways to interact with our favourite retailers. And largely speaking, that has been online. We've seen a massive $8.5 billion year-on-year -year increase in retail sales in Australia. Now, has that happened because of COVID? Absolutely, it has. Will that trend continue? Absolutely, it will. Consumers are fickle. We all know that we are, because we are as well. We look for a manner of engagement that is convenient, that is friendly, that is easy and is secure. Online, when it well executed, delivers exactly that. I think it's also important to note that we as merchants, we as small business owners, also drive this change. We are constantly looking for ways to improve our revenue stream. We're looking for techniques and manners and tools that allow us to address a larger marketplace. How do we address the customer that was a tourist that came from Japan, that came from Western Australia, that is unlikely to come back into my retail store again, but maybe they loved my product. You know, maybe you're selling a boutique product that isn't available through another store. How do you get that customer to come back and buy from you again? And importantly, how do you get that customer to come back and buy again with a low operational cost? Opening up a store in every location is not a viable solution for many small businesses. And in fact, it really defeats the purpose of being a small business. You lose control, you lose visibility. But what it doesn't stop you is having a broader range. It doesn't stop you from having a broader reach. It doesn't stop you from being able to organize and address customers not just when they walk into the store, but the next time they want to, to buy new goods and services from you. They can do that online. They can do that through telephone ordering. They can do that through recurring orders. This is all driven by the use, the appropriate accessible use of financial technology and platforms as a service. Gone are the days where you need to spend millions of dollars or hundreds of thousands of dollars to build an enterprise level website. There are solutions available to you that are work in tandem with your financial service provider to take your products, to take your experience and to take it online. And I think one of the last things, just 
e-commerce trend, but consumer trend in, in, in entirety, whether it's online, whether it's in-store, is that we're seeing a level of recalcitrance towards change. Now, if you are a small business owner or if you're a bank, yeah, many banks are looking at how do they offer additional payment influences? How do we add additional value into that ecosystem? The problem is there is a natural conflict of interest. A bank's first and foremost priority is banking services. As a small business operator, your first and foremost priority is servicing your customer and importantly, selling things to them. Now, if a customer wants to engage with you and they're a millennial, they're looking for a debit-based solution. They're looking for a buy now, pay later offering. They're looking for ways to interact with your business that are not classic credit cards. Conversely, at the other end of the spectrum, we have people that are looking at, I want to use a premium credit card. I want to use my Amex. I want to be able to use my union pay card because I have a, a family that has come out of China. I want to be able to use the instruments that are favorable to me, whether that's because they are cost effective, whether that's because I get rewards points, whether it's just because it's convenience. Engaging with a financial technology company, engaging with somebody who provides an end-to-end -end solution provides you with access to a broad range of payment instruments. The era that we offered Visa and MasterCard and FPOS check and savings is gone. Just like the era of bricks and mortar being the exclusive way to do business is gone. Consumers expect a broad range of payment instruments. They expect to be able to choose between paying with their Visa card or paying with PayPal or paying with Afterpay or HUM or using some alternative instrument. And they expect it to be a seamless transaction. You know, they're not looking for a multi-step journey or I need to call the store or I need to wait for something to happen offline. There is an expectation and it's a reasonable expectation. Go online, find the goods and services that you wish, add them to your basket, pay with the instrument that you want in the simplest manner possible, and then the goods will be shipped to you in a timely manner. These are really important trends that are not going to change and they're certainly not going to rebate anytime soon. I think there's a really key takeaway off the back of this. We're in a new era and quite simply, this new era of retail, this new era of engagement means we need a new era of payment solutions. This means we're not just looking at what my bank provides to me. We're not just saying, well, I bank with bank A, this is the product they've given me a terminal off the shelf and, and that will do. There was a time where that was absolutely sufficient. Nowadays, we need an all encompassing omni-channel, broad and capable payment solution. And that is imperative for your business to be successful moving forward. Modern payments, it's such a, a lovely term. Yeah, modern payments, what is a modern payment? Is, is that a visa payment? Is that a buy now, pay later payment? Is that a PayPal transaction? Is it cryptocurrency? The reality is modern payment solutions and modern payments are all about ensuring that your business is able to accept payments from your customer in a manner in which they choose without putting yourself at a disadvantage. We talk all about e-commerce. This entire show is an e-commerce conversation. How do we take transactions online? How do we interact with our customer through an online experience? But e-commerce is broad. E-commerce is not just a website. It's a mobile app. It's having business intelligence about your customer to say, we saw you come in two weeks ago. We know that you know, you've probably consumed that product. Would you like us to ship you another, a refill of that product? You know, would you like an additional loaf of bread? Would you like some additional value adds in that transaction? And technology and innovation drive this. Yeah, once upon a time, financial services was a banking term. There was a group within each bank, large or small, that provided merchant acquiring. They provided some FBOS terminals. Hey, maybe they even provided some online capability. Nowadays, we're seeing the opposite happen. We're seeing technology companies at the forefront of payments. We're seeing how technology can drive larger transaction size, faster transactions, higher levels of consumer engagement. Almost all of you would have seen through your own personal experience that the need to fill in four, five, six, seven, eight different fields to complete a transaction nowadays is getting less and less and less. There's organizations like PayPal and Google and Apple that are making that checkout experience as simple as possible. Why? It encourages a faster spend and that faster spend encourages repeat spend. Technology and the technology that drives your business is going to help with sales and it's going to help with sales success. There's another really important part, which is around risk mitigation. I touched on earlier that many of you would have seen 
losses through chargebacks or would be aware of the concept of a reversal or a financial dispute. There's also refund fraud. There's a multitude of challenges with accepting payments. Classically, a person walking into a store and completing a transaction was considered to be a secure transaction. And there was a very low likelihood of that transaction being disputed. As we've, as we've moved into e-commerce, as we've broadened our ability to accept different payment instruments through different mechanisms, this has brought with it a level of risk. And for many businesses, an unacceptable level of risk. We've seen situations where businesses do take the step, have gone online, and, as, and have incurred financial losses to the point where they have now turned off or disabled their online presence. This is because of a lack of engagement with the right parties. There are solutions that are cost effective by engaging with technology and fintech companies that allow you to operate securely and safely in the online environment without unduly exp exposing your business. Chargebacks and fraud are relatively easy to mitigate if you take the correct steps and engaging with the right party will help you through that journey. The last piece around a modern payments ecosystem is that last word. It's an ecosystem. No longer is it a terminal on a counter and maybe a credit card authority form or maybe a website. For a very long time, small business right the way through to large have had a challenge. And that challenge is, how do I know who my customer is? How do I re-engage with that customer? How do I get the maximum amount of wallet spend from that customer? Now, the reality is, if I walk into the store, you recognize my face. If I come in every day and buy my coffee, there's a, a level of engagement that's occurring there. But with online being this faceless, anonymous experience, you know, there's electronic disputed marketing materials, there's emails flying around. But the reality is we're not getting that single lens. We're not getting a single view. A good, all-encompassing e-commerce or payments ecosystem allows you to understand who your customer is, how are they interacting with you, and it gives you a lens across all facets of your business. It's not a lens just for one retail store. It's the ability to look at every retail store that you have in a single view and your online transactions, which are part of your retail store in that same view. It's being able to understand what percentage of wallet spend do you have. You know, if you look at a classic liquor store, does your customer spend 5% of their liquor spend in your store or 95%? And if it's 5%, is that because they're geographically distant from your store? Are they buying the same products and same pricing on a regular basis? Having an ecosystem, understand that payments are more than a terminal on a countertop or a PayPal account online, is very, very important as you move your business to its next phase and you open up your addressable market from a small radius from where your store or stores are located through to a global marketplace, which is what e-commerce delivers. I thought it would be quite pertinent to take um, a few moments to walk through a couple of case studies. The payments industry is a myriad of three letter acronyms. We have an abbreviation, we talk EMV, we talk PCI compliance, we talk about online processing versus you know, CP and CNP, all of these terms that really add no value to the conversation. What adds value is a real material understanding around how engaging with a FinTech, how looking at your, your payments ecosystem can deliver a tighter, better experience for your customer, and importantly, value for your business. So the first case study I'd like to walk you through is a Australian born and bred bricks and mortar retailer. Uh, my company has had a long-standing engagement with this business and the business has made the decision to move into new markets. So they were a fairly early adopter. Many retail locations throughout Australia, a strong, well thought out online presence that supplemented their retail stores, but 100% Australian centric. Now for a small to medium business to make that transition from one market to another market, even somewhere as geographically and operationally similar and close as New Zealand is a big investment and it's a big risk. You're leasing land, you're building st you know, stores, you're doing fit outs, you're moving stock, you're getting business registrations. Online has proven to be a path of least resistance. And it's interesting looking at you know, this particular case study, when we first interacted with this business, they had five separate parties providing their payments ecosystem. They had an, a merchant acquirer providing their in-store payments. They had a terminal vendor that was providing the terminals in their stores. 
They had a different merchant acquirer providing the online experience. They had a payment gateway provider providing the, the connectivity to allow customers to pay online. And they had a third party fraud platform. Now, there is nothing wrong with this. This is a very common situation. The problem is it delivers a, a lack of scale and it delivers an inability to take advantage of those costs. By consolidating this down to one supply chain, we were able to deliver them some material cost benefits. And most importantly, the ability to then very quickly scale into another market. End result, this business now operates in Australia and New Zealand. They're about to launch their first New Zealand retail stores as well. So we've seen a conversion. We've seen a move away from build your stores and then bring online to go online and then bring your stores. The second one I wanted to walk through was a more classic one, fresh produce. Fresh produce for a very long time has been pure bricks and mortar retail. You walk into the store, you buy your fresh bread, you buy your fruit and veg. We've seen a transition. Woolies and Coles have pioneered this, that people are going online. And this online experience is, in theory, easier. It's allowing for a, a better transaction experience. The reality is when well executed, we see a significant uplift in the number of customers you deal with. It's very hard to continually attract new and fresh customers into your retail store. However, if you open up the, the retail store to the online world, you no longer just address customers within a five kilometer radius or a 10 kilometer radius. You can address customers on the other side of the country, on the other side of the world. You're allowing for that repeat business from your loyal customers and you're opening the doors to new customers. On average, a grocery store that goes online sees 140% uplift in the foot, footfall by moving that business to online as well as in store. Importantly, they see a 34% increase in their basket size. And in fact, many see a much greater increase. The reason being is they're going online and they're looking for additional goods, additional products, very often premium products. They're looking for that value added option. If they are able to obtain that, it's a very different customer experience. No longer are they going into the store and buying the essentials. They're buying the bread and milk. They're going online and still buying the bread and milk, but they're also buying some premium products along the way. They're increasing that average spend with you and they are far more likely to re-engage with your store. So it's important to note, moving online doesn't have to be hard. There are many technology companies that can make this process simple and easy. They talk to your existing point of sale systems, they talk to your platforms and allow you to take your stock and your ecosystem online. And they allow you to address a much broader, a much wider customer base, which increases your footfall and increases your revenue. I think there's one really other important piece, which is around future-proofing your business. Now, we've talked throughout this session around the change that's happened both in Australia and globally. We've seen a 16% reduction in the amount of cash payments on a worldwide basis. This is a huge change, both in Australia, but in many other major markets. The number of people walking around with cash in their pocket is declining and will continue to decline. Conversely, we've seen a 6% year on year increase in Australia of the number of non-cash transactions. And in fact, that number is growing exponentially. This is where we are seeing consumers using their phone, using their watch, using a card to complete nowadays small transactions. It's perfectly normal now to see people paying for a coffee, pay for a, a two or $3 you know, piece of bread using a card. And this is a consumer change that will continue to happen. And I think most importantly, we're seeing a huge transformation within Australia to around the use of digital wallets. This is, again, people using their PC, their laptop, their mobile phone to initiate and complete that transaction. And this is a statistic that is going to continue to grow and it further reinforces the need for small to medium business to have multiple points of interaction. That retail store, those retail stores will not supplement online online will supplement your retail store. And it's very important that you offer a broad and competent solution and a competent marketplace to allow your customers to continue to reinteract re with you using the instrument and the method they want. The reality is myself included, I have young family. Now, I am doing ordering at three o'clock in the morning. I am the person at six o'clock on a Sunday afternoon buying furniture online. It really does reiterate into what is the new world order within retail consumer habits. Finally, a closing comment. Yeah, consumer behavior has shifted. Our businesses have shifted. 
as a leader of a business, whether you are the owner, the general manager, the financial controller, it's important we take charge. We need to take charge to future-proof your business. And we do so by broadening your customer base. We do so by ensuring that you accept a wide range of payment instruments in a secure, compliant, fast, and safe manner. We do so by making sure that as the customer, I can interact with you when I want to interact with you. I can complete the transaction in a fast and easy manner, and I can be targeted for future interactions. There is a fantastic opportunity amongst all of us now to engage with financial technology companies, to engage with your banking service providers, to engage with third parties and build out your ecosystem. The cost is no longer there. The, the prohibitive barriers to entry are no longer there. Pick up the phone, engage with your service vendors. If they can't meet your needs, find another one. There is a fantastic opportunity to continue growing your business. On that note, I sincerely hope that you've enjoyed today's session. I welcome any questions. Um, I feel that this is an area that many businesses, many small business owners look at payments and go, it's too hard. There's too much terminology. I have something that works. I'll just leave it. Please don't be complacent. Use this opportunity for the, the best possible advantage to your business. And thank you very much for your time. Thanks, Chris. That was great. Um, there was a bit of a glitch.